We're going to go through an example problem on dynamic process modeling and how to derive transfer functions from those models. So we have a, this is a tank, and we're actively heating the tank to maintain a temperature coming out. The problem is we ha also have um, ambient air temperature that's changing, and you have velocity of this wind that's um, causing the heat transfer coefficient to change. So we have a Q loss. Okay, so that is a Q that's the heat transfer uh, away from the tank, and that's dependent on this overall heat transfer coefficient times the difference between the temperature of the tank minus an ambient temperature. Now that heat transfer coefficient is going to increase as the velocity of the wind increases. So as V of T increases, that heat transfer coefficient is going to increase and we're going to lose uh, energy at a more rapid rate. Okay, so let's just go ahead and assume that um, you know these are constants, the ambient air temperature, B, A is the area, and U is kind of a not, U bars is a nominal um, heat transfer coefficient. Okay, so when velocity equals zero, the heat transfer coefficient is going to equal to U bar. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and list, you know, you can have other assumptions that we're going to make. Um, you know, in this case, we're going to derive an energy balance and then linearize that, get into transfer function form. And then uh, we'll also throw in a couple extra things here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do an energy balance around the tank. Okay, and then uh, let's see, we're going to have, okay, W, uh, CCP, and then we're going to have T in minus T out. Okay, so this is the... Uh, the enthalpy of the stream flowing in and the enthalpy of the stream flowing out and the difference there. Okay, so that's in minus out terms. And then we also have our Q term that's going to be from the heater. Okay, and then we also have the Q loss term. Okay, and so that's going to be minus U times A T minus T A. Okay, now this U term right here is actually going to be our U bar plus B V T, okay? And uh, so what we want to do is, is we now have from our energy balance, we have an equation that describes as I change my Q value or as the velocity of the wind changes, how that's going to affect the temperature of the system. Okay, so for this enthalpy term, let's just go ahead and get it in terms of Okay, rho V C C P D T D T. Okay, so that's the temperature inside the tank. That's our accumulation term. And uh, let me just go ahead and write this T I minus T plus Q minus, and then I'll put U bar plus B V of T times A times T minus T ambient. Okay, so there's my equation. And what I want to do is now linearize um, this equation and so I'll just take this right hand side and I'm going to say this is F of let's just say it's a function of um, T V the velocity of the wind let's also throw in Q there as well so it wasn't asked for in the problem but let's just put that in there as well and what we're going to do is do a Taylor series approximation Okay, so I'm going to plug in the nominal or steady state conditions here. So I'll put T bar, V bar, and Q bar plus, and then I'll have my derivative with respect to temperature. I'll plug in my steady state conditions so that this is just going to be a constant. Okay, and then T minus T bar. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing for the other ones as well. Plug in my steady state conditions and do V and then let me do Q as well. Okay, so if I uh, work this out, so let me let me go ahead and just um, 
and plug this in. Um, if I plug in steady state conditions, if steady state conditions, then this term is actually going to go to zero. Okay, and the reason for that is if I plug in uh, steady state conditions, let's say I just plug in T bar, Q bar, and V bar, and uh, the definition of steady state is that the time derivative goes to zero. So this term that I, if I plug in all my steady state conditions, that's why this first term is just going to go to zero. Okay, so if it's steady state, that first term goes to zero. Let's just go ahead and okay, derive the rest of it. Okay, so I have rho v c c p, and I have d t d t. Okay, so I'm going to do this first term right here, just with respect to uh, temperature. So I'm going to have negative w c c p. Okay, I'm going to take off these um, these steady state terms that I had just for plugging in those nominal conditions. Okay, and, um, and then I also have a temperature over here as well. Okay, so that's going to be minus U plus B V. I'll plug in the nominal condition, the nominal velocity for the wind, and then times A. Okay, so this is going to be a constant. And then I'll multiply that by T minus T bar. Okay, so that's our, our first term. Let's go with our, our second one now, which is going to be um, this one. And let me take the derivative with respect to V. And so I have minus U bar um, plus B. Actually, that's going to be um, zero there. Let me redo that. Okay, so that's just going to be, um, if I multiply that out, that's just going to be B times A um, times T bar minus T A. Okay, and then I'm going to, that's going to be a constant as well. And then I have V minus V bar. Okay, so let's do our third term as well with respect to Q. And that is going to be 1 times Q minus Q bar. Okay, so I have my, my equation now. Um, and let me just simplify this a little bit. I'll divide everything over by uh, rho V C sub P. And divide this by rho V C sub P. And rho V C sub P. And then I'll call all of this, um, let me just do that one as alpha 1, all of this, and including the negative sign, okay. I'll call that alpha 2, and then all of this I'll call alpha 3. So I've divided over by rho v c sub p, and what that, what that turns out to be now is our linearized equation. So alpha 1 and then I'm going to put this in deviation variable form t prime equals t minus t bar okay and then also v prime equals v minus v bar and then q prime equals q minus q bar. And so I have alpha 1 alpha 2 plus alpha 3 times q prime. Okay, so there is my linear equation. Okay, so at this point I want to get a transfer function which relates how the temperature is going to change to changes in the velocity and then I also want to get how my temperature changes with changes in my heating rate. So the way I do that is um, First of all, just assume that there's no change in the heating rate. So that if I'm in deviation variable form, this is going to stay at zero. There's going to be no change. So this is going to go to zero. And then let me just solve for, um, I can convert this whole thing into Laplace domain. S times T of S equals alpha one T of S. 
Okay, now remember my initial condition, because that was a deviation variable, that was equal to zero. Okay, from converting um, this term into the Laplace domain. Okay, and then let me go on to alpha two, and um, I'll, I'll just keep Q of S in there so we don't have to do it again. Okay, zero, and then let me just collect T onto that side, and then divide V over onto this side, and so I'll have alpha two S plus alpha one. I'll put this into a standard form so it's easier to see the gain and the time constant. Actually, I messed up on that. That should be minus alpha one. Okay, and so let me divide uh, top and bottom by negative alpha one. So alpha two over alpha one divided by negative one over uh, alpha one times s plus one. Okay, so that's my gain for this system. KP1, and that's tau P1. Okay, so there's my first transfer function. Now let me assume that Q is not zero, but there's just no change in the velocity. Okay, so that term is gonna go to zero. And then I'll derive another transfer function. Again, subtracting this over, collecting the T term, and then coming up with something that's very similar, okay? But in this case, I'm gonna have a different gain, which is gonna be negative alpha three over alpha one, and then my time constant is gonna be the same as you saw above. Okay, so here are my two transfer functions. I'm gonna call this one maybe G um, disturbance, and this one the G of my process. Okay, so um, if, I'm, if I'm thinking about how to combine these now, one of the things that I can do is just say, if I have a velocity of my wind, that's going to be G disturbance. And then I can add in as well my process. Okay, this is Q value is the one that I can change. Um, and there's my, my temperature. Okay, so velocity of the wind and Q both affect the final temperature. And if I have a linearized system, I can separate these two. So I can analyze the changes to the system separately and then just combine them here with the, this plus sign. So let's say we have a feedback control system now we want to try to maintain um, temperature, okay? And we have a set point for that over here. And maybe a, uh, a PID controller, okay? This is gonna be adjusting the Q to our heat tank. <clears throat> now if we measure this, and then the difference is gonna come back as and subtract the set point, um, set point minus the PV, or the um, this is our PV value, our process variable, or the temperature, and then the PID is going to adjust the heating rate, and so we have a standard feedback control loop. But let's say we are also able to measure the wind speed. Okay, so this could be a feed forward into our controller, and we're going to work to design. Uh, feed forward controllers as well. Okay, so this might be a feed forward controller that also adjusts the Q value. Okay, so if we have an uptick in the velocity of our wind, we may use this feed forward controller to not wait for an air to happen, but to start applying more uh, heat to our tank because we know that the wind has picked up. Okay, so let's just go back and, and review what we've just covered. Um, we took an energy balance. Uh, we um, then linearized that energy balance. Now, we just collected 
you know these terms alpha 1 2 and 3 don't forget to plug in the nominal values like we did for velocity and temperature and um, so those were the two values that we had to plug in for the nominal values and then these just become constants out front so a really important thing is that in a linear system it's just a constant multiplied by the variable okay and then we wanted to come up with uh, transfer functions and so the way we did that is just assume that one of our disturbances or inputs was going to be held constant and so we could make it equal to zero and then we derive uh, the two transfer functions and um, we're also going to at a future time go ahead and design uh, feed forward controllers as well so both of these process models here the disturbance and the process both came from that energy balance